This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Alma McCarty. This morning on Sunrise, a former pro wrestling star has been identified as a suspect in a fatal Portland shooting. What we know about Billy Jack Haynes being taken into custody by Portland police. Plus, Portland icon Bob Moore dies at the age of 94. We look at his legacy, including his passion for health foods and philanthropy. But before we get to those headlines, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the Sunday forecast. Good morning, Daisy. Hey, good morning, Alma. Good morning to all reviewers. Happy Sunday to you. Wanted to take you straight to Portland's living room this morning, officially starting to see things brighten up a little bit as that sun is starting to rise and the bricks are wet this morning. It's currently 44 degrees and more rain is on the way. As you can see through our satellite and radar, we're just getting finished with a first batch of showers and the next is of course hitting the coast first and then we'll be on our way hitting us along the I-5 corridor. Really haven't seen any intense measurable amount of rain, just a few traces. Hoping that will change though. Looking at our current temperatures this morning, 42 degrees out in Scappoose, 41 in Hillsborough. Looking down south, uh, almost hitting 50 degrees in the Salem area with 44 degrees over in Kaiser. Quick look at your day at a glance, Portland. Right about noon, we'll be seeing those uh, low 50s with more of those passing showers. We do start to dry out a little bit uh, for the second half of our Sunday. Clouds will do will roll on in with that sunset set for 531. We'll talk more about that 70 forecast coming up. Daisy, thank you. New this morning, two people are dead after a two car crash along Marine Drive in the St. John's neighborhood. Firefighters responded to the scene just after 11 o'clock last night because one of the cars was on fire. They put the fire out, but say two people inside of the burned car had died. Investigators are now working to figure out what caused the crash. Meantime, homicide detectives have been on the scene of a fatal stabbing in the Powellhurst Gilbert neighborhood. Police responded to the scene at a Safeway parking lot on Southeast 122nd just before 1:30. They tell us the victim, a man, died at the scene. We'll keep you updated on this case as we get more information. Now this morning, Oregon is saying goodbye to a natural foods entrepreneur. Bob Moore, founder of Bob's Red Mill, has died at the age of 94. This is archived footage of Moore in 2019 on KGW Carpool with Brenda Braxton. Moore founded the Milwaukee-based company 40 years ago. His products quickly grew into a national brand, which now offers over 200 products in more than 70 countries. Moore was committed to making high-quality food for all to enjoy. In 2018, he spoke with our Pat Doris about his love for the company he built. I was really having a good time, Pat. This is what I was made for. I knew that. I really knew that. It didn't take me long to realize that there's nothing in this world that, that this is what I, what I need to do. And I did it. And I've been doing it, and I'm doing it today. Company leaders say Moore passed away peacefully at home. He is survived by his three sons, daughters-in-law, nine grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. In a statement, the CEO of Bob's Red Mill says Bob's legacy will live on forever in all of us who had the opportunity to work with him and is infused into the Bob's Red Mill brand. A celebration of life is being planned in his honor. Detectives have identified the man accused of killing his wife in the Lentz neighborhood Thursday morning, and his name is familiar to longtime fans of professional wrestling. Ashley Grams has the latest on this case for us. A shooting Thursday morning in the Lentz neighborhood took the life of 85-year-old Jeanette Bacraft. Police, tactical teams, and canines surrounded a home. Officers said the suspect was inside. This person at first uh, was not cooperative, so we called out the special emergency reaction team and the crisis negotiation team. Two hours later, he walked out and was taken into custody. The suspect accused of killing Bacraft is her husband, 70-year-old William Haynes. He's also known as Billy Jack Haynes, a former WWE wrestler. Here's video from his debut in the early 1980s. But I'll take anybody who comes along, eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You know, if you grew up watching Portland wrestling in the early 80s, Billy Jack was part of your Saturday nights. Jim Valley, a host of Wrestling Observer Live, says Haynes was a fixture in the Northwest. 
but his professional wrestling career was never as successful as many hoped. But he never got that big push. He never got the marketing behind him. He was always did fine, but he was never a top, top guy. On Saturday, police said it's likely Haynes will face charges for his wife's death. And I know that there are people watching this now who grew up watching Billy Jack and are just like, it's very sad. It's very, it's very sad. Portland police say that right now Haynes is at a Portland hospital being treated for a condition unrelated to the shooting. Once he's released and booked, we'll know more about the charges he's facing. A person has died after Saturday morning's two car wreck in downtown Portland. Four people were injured along Southwest NATO Parkway. Police say a driver, 46 year old Jacob Tabor, was involved in another minor crash but sped off and then collided with the second car in this case, which had three passengers. One of those passengers died at the hospital. Tabor faces DUII and assault charges. A juvenile has been killed after they were hit by a car while riding their bike in Hillsboro. This happened around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon near Southeast 10th and Baseline. The driver remained on scene and cooperated with the investigation. No arrests have been made. Washington County is being sued over how it responds to people in a mental health crisis. Disability Rights Oregon claims the county violates the law when it sends mostly deputies or police instead of a mental health provider. One case highlighted in the 60 page lawsuit, the experience of a man named Joshua Wesley experiencing suicidal thoughts in 2022. He called 911 and asked specifically for a mental health professional, but dispatchers ultimately sent an armed deputy. Inside Kaiser Permanente West Side Medical Center, a Washington County deputy's body worn camera captured this interaction on October 24th, 2022. A man in crisis attempted to grab the deputy's gun while saying, let me kill myself. He made a decision uh, that he wanted to end his life. The quickest way possible for that to happen was to grab the grab at the deputy's firearm and the deputy uh, stabbed him. That man was Joshua Wesley, 27 years old at the time, diagnosed with depression and PTSD with a history of suicidal ideation. When he called earlier that night in the throes of a psychiatric crisis, he asked for help, but specifically requested dispatchers not send law enforcement. He's now named as the plaintiff in a lawsuit against Washington County. Here's managing attorney Dave Boyer. The bottom line is that people in mental health crisis need a mental health provider and Washington County is not doing that. The Disability Rights Oregon lawsuit also claims this current system violates the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. It's a pretty simple uh, remedy we're looking for. We're just looking for, you know, the appropriate response to a mental health crisis, which is mental health providers, not police. The lawsuit details other cases in the county where deputies or officers responded to mental health emergencies, ending in trauma, arrests and criminal charges for the people in crisis. A spokesperson for Washington County said although they don't comment on pending litigation, they stated in part, we're committed to providing professional and compassionate mental health services to community members experiencing a mental health crisis. They also noted their disappointment in the lawsuit, writing they've been working with the ACLU and Disability Rights Oregon for two months to address their concerns regarding behavioral health calls to 911. Now, Boyer also told me that they interviewed many people who'd experienced psychiatric trauma in Washington County, and he says many didn't bother calling 911 or trying to get help because they were afraid a police response would result.